So we're back here at our San Clemente site, and um, I pulled up, and I noticed we have a lot of grass down here on the ground. So we need to get the grass out of the way. We need to uh, put the signs up. That's why I came down here. We have some signs to put up, and um, kind of just check things out, make sure everything's okay. So yeah, let's let's get things started. So let's start off with our signs. So I have a couple of signs here. And these basically just say, hey, there's RF in here, stay away, basically. And then I also have a couple of signs. Yeah. Just blinded myself with these. So one of them, We'll have our building information on it. And the other, we'll have our contact information on it. So, all right, let's get that rolling. We need to get uh, the tools out, so let's get the tools out. Let's, uh, let's work on these informational signs first. There. So we've got this. I have enough uh, bolts, that's kind of important. If I didn't, well, that would stink. All right, let's go uh, put this up. All right, let's see how this looks. Okay, I'm okay with that being there. What do you think? I think it looks good there. Then we'll put the contact information on the actual gate itself. Can't let go because this thing's under tension. If I did, it's gonna go. <laughs> sign number one, posted now. Okay, one sign's down. Now let's get our other sign. Let's prep it here. Take the tape off. All right, so this one's gonna go on the fence or on the gate part my nylon washers now. Bolts, mounting thing, and this guy's gonna go sideways. So that way it's gonna be horizontal on the, on the gate. Okay, so I'm gonna put the nylon washers on first. Wow, this one comes with a special little bit. Okay, so now we've got these signs, and then we've got these sign guardian. Don't get it. How does this work? Insulation instructions for two inch diamond chain link fence. I get it now, I get it. Okay, so I think this side, so here's the chain link fence. This side goes onto the chain link fence like that. The sign will go out on this side, and then this will screw into the little bolt that's in there. Okay, took me a moment. Now I got it. All right, all right. So let's, let's, let's try that on here. All right, so I'm rethinking about where I'm putting my signs. Um, so this should really go on the gate. Now that I'm thinking about it. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, moving the informational sign, like who we are, the contact sign, next to the building sign and then putting the blue notice RF sign on the gate. Okay, now signs are side, side by side. All right, I'm happy with that. Now, back to mounting the RF sign. All right, well, what do you think? One RF sign down. So Camp Pendleton's right over that way. And uh, we're doing exercises, you know, training new Marines. And so, 
You always hear all the exercises from Camp Pendleton, all the things that they do. I got one. Oh, look out. And number two, and now all three signs are installed. So let's talk a moment about why RF signs are posted where they are. So RF signs are required by the FCC and OSHA and different regulatory agencies like that, but they're there to help keep you, the public, safe when you are around or near um, transmitter sites or things like that. Now the RF signs go in very, very specific spots um, at the boundaries of each different a layer or envelope as they call it. So you have your outside fence, which is what we just put signs up on, which say, hey, inside or past this fence, there's RF. And if you're not careful, you may get hurt. Now, RF by itself is not necessarily dangerous, sort of. So at higher levels, obviously, and depending on the frequency, sure, it can be dangerous. Think about your microwave in your oven. That's around, you know, 2.4 gigahertz-ish, right around Wi-Fi range. So you'd see what the effects on that. So we're talking like 1500, 1000 watts in your microwave. When you go into different frequencies, more power can be more hazardous. Um, at lower frequencies, you have other different types of hazards to deal with, not necessarily RF. So the blue signs are on the outside. They're there to say, hey, past this point, there is RF. More RF than you would normally get just walking around the city. Now you would have, when you get close to antennas, then you have the yellow RF sign, which basically says, hey, if you work with RF, this is a little bit more than you should be exposed to normally. So that just gives the workers a little bit more notice saying, I need to be a lot more careful with standing in certain spots for a long time or touching certain things. And then you have like the red signs, which generally are for AM stations because for an AM station, the tower is the antenna, not... So if you, if you were to look at our tower, all the way up there at the top, is the actual antenna. You'll see like little ring looking things, almost like a little rototiller. That's the antenna up there. But for an AM station, the tower is the antenna. The whole metal structure is the antenna. So the way that it works is that there's such high voltage, electrical voltage, that if you were to touch the tower and be standing on the ground, you would become a path to ground. Electricity loves to find a way to get to ground. If it is a wire, you know, you'll see the green wires in your home or at, at businesses, those are ground wires. If some electricity finds itself outside of the circuit, it, gets, it goes down to ground. Now, if you stand at the base of an AM station or an AM antenna at the base of the tower and you grab onto that tower and you're standing on the ground, well, Guess who now became the green wire that goes down to the ground? You did. So that RF, that is a lot of RF, or I'm sorry, a lot of electricity voltage in that antenna system now goes through you into the ground. Um, that usually does not end very well for the person. So that's the reason for the RF signs. It's to keep you safe uh, from hazards. There are certain limits that the FCC and OSHA have put on what are called public exposure. So when you're outside of the, the blue signed area uh, that says notice, there's RF on this other side. When you're on the outside of that, you're safe from RF. You should not be exposed to anything above a certain amount that has been studied for safety. On the inside of that, you may be above the limit for the public to be exposed to. Now, once you get inside that though, it's expected that you work there and that you work on the equipment. So you kind of accept that risk and that elevated exposure, knowing that you're not going to be in it all the time. So that's, that, that's what the layers are for in a broadcast station. So RF signs explained. Exciting, wasn't it? <laughs> all right, well, signs are up. Now it's time to get rid of all this grass that has grown up here. And uh, we need to pull the weed whacker out and 
bring this back down to bare ground because I don't want things growing up here like we had that one time. We had those seven foot weeds, that was terrible. So, all right, let's go get the weed whacker. Well, our time here in San Clemente was a success. We were able to get all three of our signs put up. We have our two signs here by the gate. We have the one that's on the gate that says notice. Uh, we have one here, I'm gonna walk over to real quick, on the south fence behind me. And then we have one on the north fence as well. So all these signs are good. One, it shows that we actually have activity down here, that someone is visiting this, that this is not abandoned. One thing that I did notice is that the grass grew up here down in, in this little yard that we have. And so I spent the last like hour and a half, two hours, um, just kind of going through and, and, and mowing it down with our, our weed whacker that we have. Um, but the problem is, ran out of string on the weed whacker. It's getting a little late. See, there's, there's some back there that I couldn't finish. I'll save that for another day. Um, I will be back day after tomorrow to finish this project up, um, kind of clear out the, uh, the rest of the grass that has grown up here and uh, start addressing uh, some of the equipment on the inside that I noticed that the UPSs were going beep. So anyways, all right, let's uh, finish packing everything up and uh, we'll head back. All right, got our weed whacker here and our new string. Need to replace this. Looks fairly straightforward. So sometimes being an engineer means also being a landscaper, but that's okay, or a gardener. I'm halfway thinking of letting the grass grow, getting a little push mower, and just, you know, kind of maintaining a little lawn down here. What do you think? Should I get a little push mower, let this grass actually grow, have a semi-manicured lawn? My only concern though, would be the weeds that would grow up. I can't be down here all the time. So, you know, I mean, we have a lot of different sites. And my goal, and my goal ah, was to visit each one of them once a month, but, uh, yeah, that doesn't seem to work so often. I'd like to visit all of our sites once a month, but you know, it just doesn't work out. There's all kinds of things going on and planning and preparing and um, you know, I mean, we're still, I'm still <laughs> working on the Santiago Peak upgrade project that I've been talking about for a long time now. And I haven't had a chance to do anything on that. Um, so I need to start making making waves on that one and pushing forward, getting that project completed. So that way that's off the plate because the next project I think is probably going to be an upgrade project for Palomar and um, you know trying to get that one a little bit more hardened against the elements and some of the other damage that just keeps happening there every winter. And then I think I'm gonna turn my attention down here and trying to, trying to uh, harden and, and make this uh, site a little more livable. This is kind of like my, in my mind, my backup facility. So if we ever had to leave the studios that we could come down here and 
be connected into our network, but I'm not really there yet. Let's get this trash loaded up and head out of here. So why do I want to visit all my sites once a month? Well, there's a theory in criminal justice called the broken windows theory. And I don't know, may have some validity to it, but if a site looks like it's abandoned, especially say a transmitter site, if that looks abandoned, um, copper thieves are gonna come. They're gonna figure no one's gonna miss all this copper, all this metal that we're gonna steal. So if it looks like there's somebody here, if it looks like it's always being visited, that the site's active, that it's on, um, that, you know, if, if somebody were to steal something, that it would instantly be known, they're gonna be less likely to steal something, to, you know, intrude. So that's kind of why, I mean, all of our sites are active. So let's just get that out of the way. All of our sites are active. It's just that, you know, trying to get to them and do landscaping, for example, or painting or, uh, you know, things that make it look habited. Um, those type of things need to be done. And that's where it takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort. So that's why we come down here and we take care of the weeds and take care of the grass. And I spray home defense so that way the uh, bugs and ants and spiders don't come in. And anything that tries to crawl up into the building stays outside. So I try to spray all along the building so that way they don't try to make their way up. I try to get all the conduits too. Basically any path that these uh, bugs want to try to make their way up. Thanks for joining me. Um, had to do some yard work. One of the things that a broadcast engineer has to do sometimes kind of all depends. I mean, this site, it's got a little bit of a yard, so we've got to kind of keep it clean and all that stuff. Um, but if you enjoyed this episode, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this episode, give me a thumbs down. Um, if you want to see more of these, click the subscribe button. And if you want to get notified every time I post one, well, hit the little bell icon that's right next to it. And, you know, until next time, I still have that Santiago project to do. Still got to get on that. I think we also have a Palomar visit that we need to go do. Finishing off part two of putting that satellite dish up. I still need to do that. <sighs> yes, lots of things to do. Well, we'll see you in the next episode.